In our previous lesson, we learned the basics for creating a WordPress theme from scratch. Well, in this lesson, we're going to take things a step further and learn how to add navigation menus to our theme, which can be controlled from the WordPress admin. So that means you can use the WordPress UI to add links to different pages or categories or sections of your site. And towards the end of this lesson, we'll also take a very quick look at how to have pages be styled differently than your homepage. So let's dive right in. So our goal is to add a navigation menu uh, that sits below the headers and above the content. So in other words, right about where my mouse is moving. So let's begin by hopping over to our code and carving out a place to add the navigation. So we can see that if this is the code that outputs uh, these headers, then we can simply include code directly below it to add our navigation menu. So we will add a new element, the nav element, and we can give it a class of anything that we'd like. I will choose site nav. And then perhaps you've seen this structure before where for navigations we have an unordered list and then a list item and then a hyperlink. And you would simply repeat that for as many links as you wanted to include. Well, we're not actually going to type this out ourselves. We're actually going to use a function that WordPress offers so it'll take care of all this heavy lifting for us. So it will include this code uh, for each link and then even insert the correct URL for the page. Watch how simple this is. We will simply remove uh, this unordered list and then use a WordPress function named WP nav menu. That's it. Now if we visit our page and refresh, WordPress is automatically outputting an unordered list of all of our pages. So you can see that these names correspond with our pages. If we head over to the dashboard and click pages, those are the titles of all of our different pages. So you may be thinking, okay, that's great, but I don't want to output every single page in my navigation menu. I want to have some sort of fine grained control over what links I include in the header. Well, the good news is you can have that control. In fact, let's take it a step further and imagine that we also want a navigation menu in our footer and it will include different links than the header. So let's hop over and grab this code to copy and paste and add this to our footer. Okay, so now if we refresh our page, we can see that there's also this navigation list in our footer. So now we need some way in our code to differentiate these two navigation menus. So let's hop over to our header PHP file and we're going to pass along different parameters or options uh, with this WP nav function. So we'll simply pass along an array called arguments or args. And then right above this code, uh, we can define what's in that array of options. So we'll say args equals an array. Now for the time being, we only really need to use one option, but in the future, you might want to customize things a bit further. Uh, but for now, really all we want to do is provide a name or a location for this menu. So we'll say name equals primary. And that's actually all we need for the time being. So now this spot in our theme, in this nav element, in the header, this theme location, we're giving it a name of primary. So now let's go do something very similar in the footer. So we'll hop over to the footer and we'll replace this code and we'll just change this. So instead of primary, we'll call it footer. So we just created a second theme location for menus and we gave it a name of footer. Now we're only one step away from being able to use these menu locations in the WordPress admin screen. So we can drag and drop very easily. So that one remaining step is to hop over to functions PHP and we need to register those new menu locations that we just added. So we'll add a comment that says navigation menus and we want to register those theme locations. So keep in mind, we added these theme locations uh, using the WP nav menu, but now we need to register them with WordPress. So WordPress is aware that they exist. So back to our functions file, we'll use a function named register nav menus and we'll provide it a few options uh, via an array. So Remember we named our first menu location primary. Let's go take, we'll take a look in our header file. You can see we chose primary as our name. So we'll say primary, oops. Now this is where you include uh, the actual formal name. So primary is like the short keyword phrase, uh, but now we can include capital letters and spaces and we can say primary menu. And then we'll 
include our footer. So we can give that a proper name of oops, footer menu. And it's that simple. Go ahead and include the closing semicolon. So now we can control these menus from the WordPress admin screens. So if we hop over to our dashboard and click on appearance and then menus, we should have two locations, uh, but first we need to create a new menu. So we'll name our first menu, primary menu links. So now this is different from what we just created in our code. Now we're creating a collection of links when we're naming this menu. So let's say in our primary menu, we only want links to about us, portfolio and contact us. So we'll save this menu then we can create a secondary menu and we can name it footer menu links. And let's say in the footer, we want links to frequently asked questions, terms and conditions and privacy policy. So we can save that. Now, if we head over to manage locations, this is where we can assign the different menus to the different theme locations. So remember, we just registered a menu location named primary menu. Well, now we can select primary menu links. And remember the menu location named footer menu. Well, we'll obviously assign footer menu links. So now if we click save changes and we go back and we refresh our page, we can see that only the header links are in the header and only the footer links are in the footer. So now we have these two locations in our theme that are very easy to manage from the WordPress admin. So for example, what if we wanted portfolio to actually be the first link instead of about us? Well, watch how simple that is. We simply go to edit menus under the appearance tab in menus, and then we'll select our primary menu again and watch, we can just drag and drop. So we'll drag portfolio up to the top, release it, click save menu and we're done. So from a functionality standpoint, we're done. Our code is complete, but from a styling standpoint, we're far from finished. Uh, this is probably one of the least attractive navigation menus I've seen in a while. So now let's spend a bit of time to write some CSS to make this navigation menu actually look like a standard navigation menu. So let's hop over to our style.css file, scroll to the bottom and create a new comment, navigation menus. Now let's take a look at our design again. Our goal is to remove these bullets and also adjust the styling so that they sit all on one line. So our code will look something like this. It's very boring to write. So I'll just paste it in and explain it to you. So we're removing all padding and margin from the unordered list. And then we're making sure that our unordered list will clear the floats of the list item children. So we're taking the list items, we're floating them to the left and we're removing the bullets. So if we refresh, we can see that we've achieved our goals. There's no bullets and they're all sitting on one line. Now let's also add spacing in between each link so that this looks like a proper UI for a navigation. So we will target only the header links, not the footer links. So site header menu. So this CSS selector will only target the navigation for the header, not the footer. First of all, we'll make the links uh, block level elements so that we can add padding. So display block, and then let's give them 10 pixels vertical padding and a little bit less than 20 pixels horizontal. Let's also give them a light gray border. So border one pixel solid, uh, this B value will be a light gray. And we actually don't want a border bottom uh, because there's already a line there in our header. So if we refresh, we can see that things are taking shape. Let's improve the styling a bit further by removing the underline and also adding space in between each border. So text decoration none, we'll remove the underline. And then let's select uh, the list items to add a bit of margin. So we just removed the underline and now there's spacing in between each box. Let's go ahead and add some sort of hover effect. So you can tell visually if you've hovered over a menu item. So we'll take this selector, copy and paste it and change link to hover. And then let's just give it a different background color or let's give it any background color at all. So how about a really light gray? I think that looks okay. 
Now, what about an active state? Not a hover state, an active state. So for example, if we click on About Us, you can see that it takes us to the About Us page. But wouldn't it be nice if the About Us link stayed lit up or it looked visually different from the other two links when you were actually on that page? Well, WordPress makes that very simple to do. So if we head over to our CSS, let's just create another rule. Let's actually copy and paste uh, this selector. And then we're just gonna add on a class named current menu item. Oops. Okay, WordPress automatically adds a class of current menu item to the list item of whatever page you're currently on. So this will make more sense in just a moment. So now let's create an alternative style. So we'll say background color. Uh, how about the blue value that we're using uh, for links on the page? And then let's change the actual text color to white. So now if we refresh while we're on the About Us page, you can see that the About Us and the navigation stays lit up, which is a great way to let your users know where they're currently at. So I think visually, our header navigation has progressed nicely. It lights up depending on the page you're currently on. Uh, I think now we can give a bit of attention to the footer navigation. So let's add a bit of spacing in between these links down here. So let's hop over to our style.css file. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and create a new section named footer menu. Our selector will look like this, site, footer, navigation menu, the unordered list, the list item. Uh, let's add some margin on the right, maybe 10 pixels. Let's also add some padding on the right. And then in between the padding and the margin will be our border. So we'll say border right, one pixel, how about dotted instead of solid, and a, a light blue value. So now if we refresh, we can see that these links in the footer, if you zoom in a little bit, uh, have a border on the right side of them and it's very subtle and there's a bit of spacing and I think it looks visually uh, consistent with the rest of the site. Now that wraps up what we need to know for navigation menus. So we now have one in our header and one in our footer and we can manage them through our WordPress admin. Now let's segue into the topic that we're going to cover in further detail in our next lesson. Uh, but we can sort of scratch the surface in this lesson and that topic is pages. So if you remember we're linking to these different pages and these pages live within our WordPress admin. Here are the different pages. Now, wouldn't it be nice if visually our pages look different than our homepage? So if you remember, our homepage uh, has blog posts or posts, but then our pages are different. So what if we could style our pages in a different fashion? Well, we can, and let me show you how simple it is. Let's head over to our code and take a look at the index.php file. So if you remember from our previous lesson, index.php is what controls the output of our home screen. So if we go to the home page, we have these different posts. index.php is what's controlling the output. So it's saying there should be an article, and within that article there should be a heading level two, and then the content. So what if we wanted to have a different file that controlled the HTML output for our pages? instead of index.php. It's as simple as creating a new file named page.php. So we can copy and paste the code from index into page.php, and then we can change it in any way we'd like. So for example, let's imagine on a page, we don't want the title to be a link. We just want it to be simple black text because we're already on that page. All we need to do in page.php from this code that we just pasted over from index is remove the hyperlink. So now if we refresh, uh, we can see that it's no longer a link. And what if on a page we wanted this headline to actually be larger? Super simple. We can just add some sort of unique class now that we're on a page. So perhaps we add a class uh, that says page. So then in our style sheet, we can create a rule, page layout. We can say for articles that have a class of page, target the heading level two and make them a larger font size. So we could say 300%. So if we refresh, you can see that that's taking place. And from here, the sky is the limit. You can customize the HTML for page.php in any way that you'd like. And then you can include your own CSS uh, for any unique classes that you add. Now, none of this will affect the way that the home page looks. So you're already seeing how you can create unique layouts depending on the different WordPress content that you're viewing. 
Now in future lessons, we're going to learn that there's much more than simply index PHP and page PHP. But for now, just know that your understanding of WordPress is growing very rapidly and it won't be long before you're aware of all the ins and outs and different files that you can create to have fine grain control.